So here we are, I've got two cameras. I've got the UX180 with its ND filters, the internal ones for the lens, and then I have a variable ND filter on the front. This next camera is a GH4 with the Panasonic Leica 100 to 400 millimeter lens, and it has the official Tiffin solar flare filter designed for the eclipses. I have the third camera that this microphone is running on. It's just a wide shot with an ND filter, and then this Insta360 for this shot here. So we are about one minute away from totality, and totality for us in Southern Indiana is gonna last about three minutes. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> there it is. Oh my god. Oh, I'm losing it here. Let's bring that back. There we go. All right, I've got it on that camera. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah, I can't even pick it up on this camera, that's funny. Yeah, it's not coming in at all. And this is the one, the super expensive lens. I guess it's that filter I've got on, it's just too much, I'm gonna have to take it off. There we go. Yeah, the, the solar filter, I had to remove it to get it. All right, there we go. Okay, we're back up. Had to take the solar filter off to actually get the shot. Okay, we've got it there. It's time to take some pictures on this camera. Okay, we are getting pictures here. Frogs are going crazy. Just gonna let that one roll. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hmm. 
Yep. I have to get the filter back on. <laughs> okay, keep your glasses on now. Yep, nope. fireworks. All right, it's going to open back up here. No, you're fine. Very cool. Got it going the other direction. I'm gonna turn this camera back on as it opens back up. Okay, the Panasonic long lens is back on and we'll sync it. So just to recap, we've uh, passed totality. It lasted for about three minutes here in Southern Indiana. Um, some interesting things that I found during my recording process. So the first thing was the Panasonic UX180 I'm using. Um, I utilized the internal ND filters that are applied via switch, and I had a variable ND filter on the uh, front of the lens, just the kind that you turn the, the filter like a polarizing filter to adjust the level of ND. So that actually worked better than the Tiffin Solar 18 stop filter uh, that I used on this camera. This is a Panasonic GH4 with the Leica 100 to 400 millimeter lens on it. So here's the difference. Um, when we reach totality, I guess the amount of light coming through that corona around, uh, around the moon it was getting canceled out by the ND filter uh, on this camera, that Tiffin 18 stop filter, that was just too much. You couldn't see anything, the, the image went black. And so um, I ended up just taking the filter off during the totality to get that shot. And luckily this camera was set up primarily for still photos. So I was able to do that in a quick fashion and get plenty of pictures during totality. I didn't miss the shot or anything like that, but I did have to think on my feet and monitor the shot and uh, apply my basic photography skills to make sure I didn't miss it. Now that video camera that I'm talking about, um, it actually worked out really well using the variable ND filter and the camera's internal um, because I was able just to switch it down on the camera and then adjust the filter um, with my hand to um, reduce the amount of ND filter being applied and I did that to the other camera I'm using which is also Panasonic GH4. It just has a standard um, a standard variable ND filter on the front of it. There's no other filters I have on that lens. Um, and that's using a Tamron 15 to 50 millimeter f2.8. It's a Canon lens being adapted with a calm light filter. And that was just for a wide shot. And that's actually the camera that this microphone is plugged into to keep it all in sync. And the camera that you're seeing me on is an Insta360, which I just let run uh, the entire duration of uh, my setup and after the eclipse to make sure I had a constant uh, video feed of what was happening so I could talk about it more behind the scenes. But 
it worked out really well. I'm very happy with the setup. Um, this lens was perfect for the pictures that I needed. But again, I was not expecting to take that filter off during the moments of totality. I mean, I've never experienced that firsthand uh, behind the camera uh, during an eclipse. So just a learning moment, I suppose. This is the second eclipse that I've been involved in for video production. The last one was in 2017. I was working for a TV station in Henderson, Kentucky, and I was involved more of the planning side um, of, of that and logistics, and I, I wasn't actually operating a camera for that. We had other folks that were dedicated to that shoot, and I don't remember them saying that they had to take the filter off of their cameras, but I don't know if they were using the 18 stop ND filter or if they were using a combination of their cameras ND filters which were standard broadcast cameras that have them built in and maybe some other filters on the lens but um, yeah that's just something I wasn't expecting but not something that ruined the shot now if I only had one camera going that could have been very concerning um, if that would have just gone black during totality I you know I would have had some moments where you didn't see anything at all during that corona moment but uh, fortunately I've got plenty of cameras running and didn't lose the shot there so that's my thoughts on the Eclipse so far. So the camera you see on the left again that's the Panasonic GH4 with the Lumix 100 to 400 millimeter lens and it has the Tiffin limited edition B&H photo 50th anniversary 72 millimeter ND filter which is an 18 stop solar filter. Behind that is just a standard UV filter to protect the lens. And this camera that you see here, that is the Panasonic UX180. Um, I had to take the lens hood off to accommodate that 67 millimeter variable ND filter, because as you know, those variable ND filters, it's almost like they have two uh, polarizing filters that um, as you turn the dials, that's adjusting the level of filtration and that front element, it has to have a wider diameter filter for it to turn and be able to adjust like a dial. So as a result of that, that larger front size will not be accommodated by my lens hood and you have to take the lens hood off. Um, I noticed that on most camera lens hoods that I have, I have to take that off. The exception is the other camera that I'm about to show you. So this is another Panasonic GH4. I just set it up to get a wide shot and it has the microphone running through it for all the cameras. And I was able to apply the 72 millimeter variable ND filter to it with the lens hood on. Um, as you can see, it's kind of bulging out. Um, so I had to apply the lens hood first and then screw in the ND filter after that. Otherwise, the lens hood would not fit at all. It's just the ND filter is too large. Another thing I found interesting was the sun wasn't in the same place that I thought it was going to be. I did two test shoots over the last week. Uh, one was about a week ago and the other one was just two days ago. And in both of those tests, the sun was in relatively the same position. Um, it was basically in between a, a roof line and a tree that are here in my neighborhood and just directly above the middle point of those. And I timed it right at two o'clock. Um, I started a little bit early. I think I started maybe at 150 and then ran till about 215 to um, get an idea of the variation of the placement of the sun. But um, I had to get a totally different placement today. Um, I was noticing it as the eclipse was, was starting its path that uh, my trajectory and where I was pointing the lens was totally off base. Now, I don't know how it can get that far off in just a matter of a couple days, but that might be something that you keep in mind um, if you're planning to record an eclipse where you are. Definitely do those test shoots. They, they got me in the ballpark of where the sun was gonna be, but I ended up backing up about 15 feet um, to, let's see, 15 feet to the east and just a little bit to the south, maybe about four feet to the south compared to the two tests I did. So if you're in an area where you have a very tight view of the eclipse during your test shots, you might wanna reconsider getting an area that's much more open where you're not gonna run the risk of missing your shot. 
Now, something that probably goes without saying is make sure that you plan early for the shoot. I rented my lens about, I'd say, two months ago. I started looking about three months ago, then actually secured the rental in that two-month period sometime in February. Um, I also made sure last night that all my cameras were charged, all the memory cards were formatted and in the camera, and any filters that were on the lens were already applied and cleaned, so I wasn't running the risk of having a spot or an imperfection that could uh, alter my image or impact that negatively. Another thing that you want to do is have a staging area. So I'll show you a shot of this here. I actually had a table set up, um, a ladder in case I needed to get my tripod very high and was having trouble accessing it. I had a light plugged into uh, to an outlet on my patio in case it went completely dark and I couldn't see anything. Fortunately, there was enough light from the corona that I could make my way around the yard, no problem. But you know, leading into that, I wasn't sure if I could. I, I didn't really know what that total darkness was going to feel like. Um, I also had a flashlight, spare batteries, uh, camera bag, so if something did happen in a pinch and I needed to respond quickly or make some last minute adjustments, I had all of my materials in front of me and ready to go. Also make sure you have plenty of eclipse glasses um, as, as you might need to look and see where the sun is as you're pointing and adjusting your shot and your framing for your cameras. There were a couple moments uh, early on when I set up the test shots this morning where um, I, I wasn't quite sure where to point that lens, especially that 100 to 400 millimeter. It's such a, a long focal length that you can easily get um, out of alignment, just a fine-tuned panning or tilting might result in a, um, a completely missed shot in your framing. So as far as the day of recording preparation, I started setting up these cameras about 12 o'clock today. I, I placed all my tripods out, then got all my cameras lined up and started mounting them and getting ready to go. I didn't want them sitting out much longer than that because I didn't want them getting really hot and have the risk of overheating. Um, I don't think the UX180 really had any chance of that given its form factor, but the GH4s, you know, I wasn't sure. I don't do a lot of outdoor shooting with those. I wouldn't think that they would overheat, but I didn't want to take that risk of getting them hot uh, before I even start recording that shoot. So I kept them in the shade until I was ready to go. Um, and then everything else I set up was around that time and I was kind of going at a moderate pace getting my cameras ready. Again, I wasn't rushed, but I wasn't really moving too slow or dragging my feet either. And I felt like that gave me just enough time. I started recording um, at about 1.45, so I'd missed maybe 15 to 20 minutes of the beginning of the partial eclipse, but I wasn't really concerned about that. I, I was getting some still photos as that was happening. Um, but the main thing was I wanted to make sure that I was rolling on the duration of totality and that was something I was able to do. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about recording an eclipse in your area. I think the next time that Southern Indiana is going to be in the uh, the path of totality is an estimated 600 years. So I wanted to take, take advantage of this opportunity to get this, especially seeing um, what it was like seven years ago uh, as I was working at the TV station then. So again, I hope this helped you and thanks again for watching The Sharpshooter, teaching you valuable skills to make better videos. See you next time.